bow our heads and close our eyes. Almighty God, eternally heavenly Father, you are here, Almighty God. I will love you, how we adore you and appreciate you. Heavenly Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We thank you for your being in our midst this morning. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will come and take control of Almighty Father. Speak to us in your own very special way. Here we are submitting for duty. Oh Lord, knowing you as God, that has never failed your children. Bless us this morning. Never fail us, oh Father. We are trusting and depending on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the reading of the word. Bless the preaching of the word, Father. Bless Heavenly Father, all those that are here, that they may be able to get something. Have a portion from you. Thank you, Brother Abongil and Milatin. May you be with you. Heavenly Father, be in attendance in that place as well. As we give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, saints. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you just turn to your neighbor and say, May God richly bless you. Amen. I welcome you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Greet your neighbor with a smile. Greet your neighbor with a smile. Amen. Okay. Now let's turn to the word of God. Thank you for the musicians. Let's turn to the word of God. In the book of Revelation chapter 21. We'll read just that uh, scripture and take our seat, but I'm going to read a lot of scriptures. Revelation 21, from verse 1 to verse 3. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea, and I, John, so the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will do with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. <laughs> Guba elukala izulu nukala umshaba ujule. Noluanje aluse kondaza mna yohani na wana umzi onwele. Iyerusalema encha. Usisha uvela kutiko upuma ema zuluini. Ulungisi uwe jomu chakazi e hojise elue ndo tayake. Ndeva izu elikulu lipuma ema zuluini siti. Ya wana umuba loga tiko unabandu. Uya kushala nabo emube ni bona babe nabandu bake ye na utiko abe nabo ebe mutiko wabo. May God add the blessings to the reading of his word. You may take your seats. Siko magonge nsikili lofu ndegozi la ke singasela pans. Like to greet you all in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are so happy to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, I'm happy to see all of you. See those uh, that I have not seen for some time. And those that I see for the first time, may God bless you. Sister Kathy, God bless you. So glad to see you. Amen. Uh, Sister Romtanda Zodia, have you born in May God bless all of you. Amen. God deserves all the honor and all the praise. Amen. Uh, I first want to thank the church uh, for the way you've uh, participated in the Easter services we had. Amen. I, I, I was so blessed to see you being you know, helping. Amen. Starting in the, you know, sound department. In the videos. 
in, in, in ushering and coordinating, in singing, in food, uh, washing off the dishes, cooking for the believers. Amen. May God richly bless you. Amen. Amen. Uh, it was a, a, a quite a huge convention. When we were counting the seats, it was uh, over 650 seats that we had. And we had services, those seats were filled to capacity. Uh, so you can imagine the people who were cooking for so many people <laughs> and washing so many dishes <laughs> so may God bless the teachers <laughs> God bless you I know you were helping for one day of the three days but that one, one day was too much. Amen. They made me to sleep at two that night at home. Because they were busy peeling and preparing and all that. And woke up very early in the morning. But may God richly bless you. And you cooked a very nice food. Very nice. May God bless the saints. We thank God for you. Amen. Um, yeah, and the services were a blessing. Yeah, so for those that don't know where to find them, the people that are projecting at the end of the service, they must they must remember to project where to get the services. Those that we heard in the Easter. But God bless you. Let's get to uh, this morning's uh, uh, service. Amen. I saw. Uh, my, my dear brother from Kailicha. Amen. We were together. When was it? Thursday night. Yeah. God bless you. I God in the Amen. Uh, speak to your heart so that you can be blessed. Amen. God richly bless you. Yeah. Happy belated birthdays to those that had birthdays. While I still remember it. Amen. Uh, it was Sister Sisanda one day. Um, it was Sister Isaac and Sister Setu on the same day. Yeah, Sister Setu seems nervous. It looks like she's hiding in the first day. Is it a... Is it a... a, a you know, a, a milestone birthday? <laughs> You know, there's some birthdays when you reach uh, uh, some certain ages. So that age, you realize, ah, I'm getting old now. You, you don't wanna, <laughs> you don't feel like celebrating that. You realize this means I'm getting old. Amen, sister Lizzie was was it last night or the night before? Sister Lizzie. The night before, amen. And and everyone that I did not um, remember, we also say we never said it. Uh, congratulations, uh, congratulations to our doctor in the waiting. Uh, she graduated a second master's degree. Two, two weeks ago, graduating a master's, yes, be Nigule, Mavina, Sister Tandele, Sister Tandele, and uh, she's going for her PhD. We are for PhD. So that's the third time waiting coming here. God bless her. Amen. Yeah, so we, we thank God for those that are passionate about education. Amen. God richly bless you. She's got two, so I can ask for one, and she keeps one, there's nothing. She will lose nothing. Amen. She just gives me one, and she keeps one and go to the PhD. I will be fine just with that one if she gives me that one. 
Amen. God is the blessed. We want to talk this morning. Uh, if I can give it a title. Uh, I want to take it there from Revelation 21 verse 3. When John saw this uh, new Jerusalem coming down from God in heaven and coming out of heaven prepared as a bride but don't for her husband when he saw that bride in that perfect picture he came to a declaration and he says behold the tabernacle of God is with me and God will dwell with them and they shall be his people God himself shall be with them and be their God I want to speak on the tabernacle of God is within me the tabernacle of God is within me Amen so we find here that since the beginning right from the book of Genesis God wanted to dwell with men he wanted to dwell with men something happened in between you know. something disturbed that picture but we find John at the closing of the Bible he is rejoicing because God again has achieved what he wanted to achieve in the new Genesis to have the tabernacle of God amen and the reason God beat that tabernacle of Moses in, 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 in the book of Genesis, he wanted to dwell with man. He was hiding himself behind better skins. But behind those skins, people saw skins. But behind the skins, it was God that was hiding there. Even today, God hides himself behind skins. But it's not better skins now. It's not it's human skins. And people see human skins. And they, you know, and it becomes a stumbling block for them. But behind the human beings, within the human beings, there is a tabernacle of God. Right within that human being. God has achieved that in this hour. Let us turn to the book of Exodus. Chapter 25. And read it right there. When God was building this tabernacle. In Exodus 25. Exodus 25. You know we find. In Exodus 24. When we look at God there. Speaking with Moses. You know and telling Moses. To go into the mountain. And. Moses went up into the mountain and the cloud covered him. So Moses is telling, the God is telling Moses with Joshua his servant that he must go up into the mountain. That's in Exodus 24. Amen. Moses rose up and, and Joshua Joshua, his servant, was with him. They went into the mountain and the presence of God came down in the form of a cloud. And God on the seventh day, you know, God on the seventh day spoke within the cloud into Moses. Amen. And we find that Joshua had to have the same experience that Moses had to feel that presence of God. That's why the, the fivefold ministry today need of the same experience that the messenger had. The pending bush experience. In fact, everybody, you must never allow the devil to lie to you. You must never allow the devil to do what you you need to have your own burning push experience. You must have a place you can point to and say from that day I met God and I was never the same. You must have a day to point back and say in that day I had my experience. I've got a day but I'm pointing back to you and I know Met me in the 
What must be put in place? The dimensions and the sizes and the furniture. And everything that must be in the temple. In verse 8 he says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. You see God's desire. He wants to dwell amongst his people. He says, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. So Moses was making the earthly tabernacle according to the pattern he saw in heaven. According to what he saw in heaven. He says, Thou shalt put the ark in the testimony which I shall give thee. Verse 16. No, verse 16. Come to verse 16. Isn't we know and Yahu Niga Sona Uze Usbege Echeyen? So he's telling them, right there you must have the Ark of the Covenant. And put the Ark there. And then he's going to have a testimony that he's going to put in the Ark. So he's going to have a testimony. He's testimony. Says the testimony which I shall do. Because this is not a man's word. This is the word God gave. This is not the word of man. It may be written by man. But this is the word of God that God gave. This is the ark today. And thou shalt make a mess seed of pure gold two cubits and half shall be the land thereof, and a cubit and a half, the bread thereof, and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them, and in the two ends of the messy seed. Uza wenze isi shalu so kutama kusha, nge kolite eto tegleyo, ubute baso mabuwe zi kubite, ezi mbini, ezi neskingata, ubanzi baso buwe i kubite, ezi neskingata, uze wenze i kerubi zibe mbini, nge kolite, uze nza wos kanda zivele, Make one kerub on the one end and the other kerub on the other end. If you not mess it, shall you make the kerubims on the two ends thereof. And the kerubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mess seat with their wings. And their faces shall look one another. Toward the mess seat shall the faces of the kerubims be. When the kerubi ibe ibe nye ivele es pelwe ni seli ikala enye ikerubi vele es pelwe ni seli ya es pelwe ni so kama kusha wazenza ikerubi zivele es pelwe ni zaso zosbini and thou shalt put the mess seat upon the ark and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee maze ikerubi ziwo lule ama pigo pezu zisi Sitele, zisitele ise nga mapigo azo, isi shalo so kama kusha, ubu so bazo ukangilane, bubeke eslalo eni so kama kusha, ubu so beke rupi ezo, uzo, usibeke eslalo so kama kusha, pezo wechea, ufage cheni, isi ngino, endi ya ukunika so. And I will meet with thee, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee, 
from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So God is making a place that's going to be a meeting place. He says, I will meet you there. There is a meeting place. When you read it in the book of, of Deuteronomy, it's a place where God has put his name in there. He is not meeting men just anywhere. He would meet men where the Ark of the Covenant is. Covered by the cherubims. Where he has put his name. Even today, he does not meet men just anywhere. He meet men where he has put his name. He says, I will meet with thee there. You see, when Adam and Eve, Adam no Eve uh, before they fell in sin, Amen. Before they fell, before they fell in sin, you know, a God used to visit them. He used to meet them. He used to walk around them. But sin came and separated the connection between God and man. But God always had a desire. I want to visit my children again. I want to meet my children again. Then we told Moses, I'm now avoiding myself. I'm now putting my plan of meeting men. Build the tabernacle. Let it have three cards. And in the third card, in the holies of holies, build it in a certain way. After this Ark of the Covenant has been made. So you say, I'm going to read this scripture in Numbers chapter 7. He's telling him to build the Ark of the Covenant. And he promises him in Exodus 25 verse 22. There I will meet with you. So then he says in Numbers chapter 7. Verse 89. And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of testimony from between the two cherubims, and he spake unto him. <laughs> Uguba atete na yewewa ili izwi liteta guye li vela esalo niso kama kusha empezi weche yes nino. Pagati weke rupi zombi ni wateta ge ye na guye. So God spoke with Moses from among the ark of the covenant in the holies of holies. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. From the holies of holies, you know the Bible says, and he spake unto him. So God spake unto Moses. Amen. Amen. As he has promised, that I will meet you there. So now when the tabernacle was done, and Moses goes inside the tabernacle, there God meets 
with you and speak with him. You see, it has always been a desire of God to meet with these people, to dwell among his people. This is something we must recognize. This is something we must come to find. Amen. If we can only recognize the love of God among us, how he loved us so much until the Bible says Herod is, is love Herod is love not that we loved God but he loved us it was not us that loved God that loved us it was not us going after God it was God It's easy for the children to surrender and submit to their parents. Amen. Amen. When a husband loves the wife, it's easy for that wife to surrender to that husband. And if that love is not bringing the surrender, there's something wrong in the heart of the one that's been loved. He's not catching the revelation. He was loves. Love brings surrender. Love always brings surrender. Amen. Amen. That must be revealed in us. And it takes confidence. It takes confidence to be submissive. It takes confidence. It takes confidence to be able to submit. It takes confidence to be able to surrender. It takes confidence and and it, will, if, it, it takes love to bring submission. Right. That's why if a woman thinks her husband is going to dominate her and trample over her and beat her she's not going to submit she's not going to surrender there's fear in that she will act out of fear but she won't submit she won't surrender because something is wrong amen it's done out of fear it's done out of punishment. It's done by punishment. So something is wrong. Amen. That's why, brother. He comes alone. The greatest. No, I don't have to. Yeah, that's why the, 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 the 
Fear is even the greatest plague in the church. Because fear is the lack of faith. And the lack of assurance. That's why, brother, you know, we are not beating and beating the church. Beating and beating the believers. Because you make them nervous. You are giving them a spirit of fear. Whereby they are not able to relate to God as the God of God. They won't catch a revelation of God being a God of love. Amen. Amen. Because then, you know, that they are being feared. Yeah, a woman, brother, that's always beaten. She does not catch a revelation of who she is. She is scared to even change a curtain. I wonder if my husband is going to be able to the curtain. She is not catching the revelation of who she is. Amen. You know, and in there is fear. You will find a woman that, you know, is beaten. That is dominated. She gets to two things. It's either she will bottle up and lose confidence and wants to throw herself back. Or she will come and wants to fight that with the, with the same force. And she becomes a she wants to fight it the same way. But when she's driven by love and she catches that, she's able to surrender. She's able to submit. Knowing that I can submit to this man without fear because he loves me. That's why when we catch a revelation of the love of God in us, when we See that even the, you know what a wife see the husband reflecting God reflecting the love of God when he catches the revelation that I have chosen this one and she is the second best thing she is the best thing outside of salvation that God has given me she is, he is even willing to lay down his life for her ah, that woman brother catches God confidence that woman walks knowing I've got a backup of my husband I'm under the protection of my husband that woman brother submits to the leadership of that man without questioning it because she's not beaten to submission she's loved to submission and when a woman catches that, catches that revelation, then she's able to submit. When church catches that revelation, that church is able to submit to God. And then God is able to come close to us. You see, God always has this desire to dwell with men. Listen to me. Let's go together. I'm going to try to be slow. God always had this desire to dwell with men. But men also had a desire to dwell with God. Amen. Amen. So we see here in Revelation 21 when John sees this new Jerusalem adorned as a bride adorned for husband he gets to a declaration that the tabernacle of God is with me and he shall be their God and they shall be his people amen and when you see that and when you see that you know John is, is proclaiming it in the future home but the prophet has come to say I'm no longer going to call it now I'm going to call you proud. Like we were preaching on Wednesday from Laodicea to the bright age. How that changed. Amen. Then you find you know when he calls you bride that means the groom is around. 
When you get to a wedding, do you see the bride? Who comes first? The bride or the groom? In that church. When you see the bride entering the door, and they say, Here comes the bride, you must know. The groom is in the list. Because the groom goes first. So when the bride comes, the groom is around. So when he says, I'm going to call you bride, that means the groom is around. The groom is already there. I hope you are catching something there. In the book of St. John, chapter 14, verse 20, Yes, at that day, which is this day, at that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. At that day, you shall know there is a harmony between God and Christ and his bride. Because he says, at that day, you shall know that I am in you and you are in me. So there is a union. There is a, 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 a harmony that is between the bride and Christ. And the reason for that is because man always is a part of God in him. That makes him to have a desire and a to want to dwell with God. I'm going to read many scriptures, some more scriptures in, in Stellenbosch. Some more scriptures about God dwelling with men and men dwelling with God. But I want to approach another angle here this morning. You see, there's difference. There's two types of people on the face of the earth. Two generations of people. There's a generation of the serpent through Cain. And there's a generation of Adam through Seth. Because the first man on earth was Adam. And the first man was there was no man before Adam. There was no woman before him. So they were the first man was, was Adam. And the first woman was Eve. But before she was called Eve, she was called a woman. She was called Mrs. Adam. The name Eve came after the flood. Before the fall, she was not called Eve. She was called a woman. She was called by the husband. That's why the church, before the fall, it did not have a name. It was called by Christ. They were called Christians. You can go through history. The first name that was given to a church was the Roman Catholic Church. 325 after. 325 years after the death of Christ, then the church was given a name for the first time. It was now Shifa. She became a Roman Catholic church. Then all the other names followed. That's why the Bible calls the Roman Catholic church the motherhood. Because they follow the same spirit. That's the Bible. It's not me. It's the Bible that says it like that. Now, before the fall, these churches do not have a name. Because I can ask you what was Paul's church? What was Jesus' church? What was Peter's church? They say to the saints in Corinth, to the church of the Romans, to the church of the Ephesus, just like we are saying to the church of Crevendale, to the church of, of, of Port Elizabeth, to the church in, in Soweto. You know, it, it was coming like that. Amen. 
But then we find what does the money is after the fall? And then what see what the fall happened like this. The serpent, which was not a snake, is a thing on your guy, but it was a serpent, a closest animal to man, which had a plant that could mix with man. That serpent is a thing I'm too. I liked what the you know, uh, the uh, brother Alistair put it. Says that serpent came to Eve and they were talking and Eve was seeing mother cow mother dog mother lion mother elephant giving birth Amen and Eve could not wait and the serpent was saying do you see that the goat can give birth. Do you see that a, a lion can give birth? Do you know you can reproduce as well? Amen. And Mother Eve could not wait. And the serpent introduced the animal way of giving birth to Eve. That's why it's not easy for human beings to give birth. So that thing 
wrath comes, the anger comes from Kai. He said he was the first one. I want to read it the way it's written here. His countenance fell. His countenance fell when God was correcting him. You will find it in, 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 in chapter 4 of Genesis. It says, when God was, you know, when God rejected and God was correcting him, in verse 6, God is asking Kai, why art thou rough? Why is thy countenance fallen? What we over who can you know about Kumbe? You know, go up when God speaks with you, when God corrects you, you don't be wrath. You can't be angry. You must accept the correction of God. But this man could not accept it because he was not of God to begin with. Amen. And then. He lied in the face of God after he killed Abel. God is asking him, Where is Abel, your brother? Says, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? He killed him. The first murderer was Cain. First liar was Cain. Yeah, you can see people run. Lying in your face. Amen. Hey with a straight face. No so And they don't even know. You're know, not even aware where that spirit comes from. Come lie with a straight face. Some give a, 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 a apologies in church. Which are cooked lies. It has to be made so 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 valid. So that the pastor in the church will understand. Oh man. If you were to know where that spirit comes from. Amen. So he became the first liar. The first murderer. The first one. Who introduced. You know a, 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 a wrong marriage. And all these things. Because. He was not of the generation of Adam. He was of the generation of the serpent. Now there is a generation of Adam. And there is a generation of the serpent. Now the generation of Adam. Has become the members of God's body. They are the members of his body. Because Adam came from God. When you read Ephesians 5. Verse 30. Ephesians 5. Verse 30. It says for we are members of his body. Of his flesh. And of his bones. Catch that. We are members of his body. Of his flesh. And of his we are of the family of God. We are members of his bones. We are members of his flesh. We are members of his bones. We are of the body of God. We are of the body of Christ. As the generation of Adam. And God. Yes, the God. John chapter 4. John verse 22, verse 23. Says God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But God has a God. Because when God came down in the book of Genesis, a man visiting Abraham. He came in the boat. Where is the same Zimbabwe? He came in the boat. Where is the same Zimbabwe? Called so funny. Called Melchizedek. He was in a boat. Where is the same Zimbabwe? That could eat meat. Or was good in Yama. That could drink water. Or was good sailor. It was a boat. Oh, Zimba. So God has a boat. How he is a spirit. But he's got a boat. It's not a boat that can die like this. But it's a boat where Adam looked at. Where Adam looked at. Where Adam invited the man. And not at a call for the man. Who picked for the man. 
Yes. So God has a plot when he used to visit Adam and Eve. Adam no Eve. He was not just a spirit. The Bible says he would walk well with them. So if he is walking, he has got a plot. So he used to visit Adam and Eve in a plot. It's a three of one boat. A heavenly boat. And we were created like him. Yeah. In his own image. When you say his image, you need to copy. His copy. Brother, Amen. if you want to take my image, my image, it's my, 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 my copy. Yeah, it's my. I've got one here. Now, oh, yeah. Oh, that's my image. It's my copy. When you look at that, you will see how I look like. You will see how I look like. So, man was created in his image. In his copy, in the way God is, when we were created, and that's why we understand by the scriptures that there is two of us. There is two of me by the scriptures because this body is not the image of God. This is not the image of God. When I saw I was created in this image, it is not this. There is two of me. There is two of us. As a generation of Adam. For a generation of Cain. There is not two of them. There is not two of them. They don't have heaven to put those they don't have three of any points. It's for the generation of Adam. Those have a three of any points. They've got a heavenly body. We've got a body. Part of us. That is in heaven now. In the sixth dimension. We sing the star. There are three of any points. And part of us is in Christ for the new one. Listening to a service. Right now. Go. Right now, as you speak, I've got a part of me that is in heaven in the sixth dimension. In the theophany point, right now, it's not getting tired that one. It's not feeling the heat that one. But I've got a part of me that is standing in front of you. Oh, my. When you read in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, 18, verse 10, 10, it speaks about part of us. Matthew 18, Matthew 18 in verse 10, it says, Take heed. Take heed. Amen. Be careful. Take heed that you despise not these little ones. Speaks about these little ones. Matthew 18, brother. Take heed that you despise not these little ones. I'm reading verse 10. For I say unto you, that in heaven, there are more angels do on Always behold the face of my father which is in heaven. Your angelic bodies do always behold the face of the father in heaven. Jesus, Jesus is giving the world a notice. Says, Take heed how you deal with this little I've got angelic points in the heaven that's beholding the face of the Father always. There are people on the face of the earth that has angelic points in the heaven right now. Yes, sir. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. You go to the book of Revelation. To the book of Revelation. Chapter 7, I mean, uh, chapter 10. Or you go to chapter 1. 
in six about seven stars in the hands of great hand of God which are the seven angels to the churches long before they were born we see them being in heaven long before they were born when John sees the vision he sees the vision of another one and he bows before that one that one stops John says don't wait I am I'm not a, I'm one of your servants, the prophets. Worship God. That one. Amen. Uh, uh, John sees him. Two thousand years ago. Long before 1909. Long before he was born. He sees him in heaven. In that angelic port. And he wants to worship him. And that one stops him. So don't do it, John. I'm not the one to be worshipped. Worship God. I'm one of your fellow servants. I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. But he looks as an angel. He is called an angelic body in heaven. The flesh body was not born yet. That one was born on April the 6th. Five o'clock in the morning. In 1909. John sees that body. The angelic body of that flesh. Two thousand years before it is born. Amen. Amen. Okay, listen here. In questions and answers, in the COD, questions and answers on Hebrews, paragraph 827, says, Look, for when he was first made, he was made two people together. He's talking about men. When he was first made, he was made two people together. He was made both male and female. The man was. The Bible said he was. God made men both male and female. Created him. Now notice when man was separated from the theophany and put in flesh, he wasn't just all together there. Part of his being was still a theophan. Amen. When Adam, Adam was separated from his theophan, he was not all together. Flesh. Part of Adam was still a heavenly body. Genesis 1. Genesis 1. Verse 26. Created male and female. Genesis 2, Genesis 2 verse 7, 7 is formed into flesh to till the ground, put into flesh. But when you see that flesh, it's not altogether there. Part of Adam is still in Theophan. Part of him is still in Theophan. Listen to what it says in paragraph 25. Says there, you have to have a certain percent of light. That's paragraph 835. Paragraph 835. You have to have a certain percent of light to make a shadow. And that's the way it is here. We are both natural and spiritual. We are both natural and spiritual. That's why the world does not understand the children of God. Because you are natural, but you are influenced by the spiritual world. You are influenced by a theophany board. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 44 says there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Right now, go. Right now, go. You have a natural body and you have a spiritual body. Right now, go. That's the reason you've got a desire to dwell with God. Desire to be connected with God because right now you've got a spiritual body. 
feel your fanny pole. And you can feel the pool holding you from that pole. That's why when you die, you don't become a spook. You don't become a stunzela. Because you've got a pot. It's for those who don't have a funny pot. Ah, they can come and spook you. They can come and spook you. Now you've got a natural boot. And a spiritual boot. Listen what it says here. In paragraph 54. Questions and answers on Genesis. He says here. So he knew. He was going to have some women. So he just made their spirit right there. The Bible said. In Genesis 1.26. He created a man. In the prefigure. Male and female. He made the woman and the man before there was ever formed on the dust of the earth. And then God made the man not in his own image. This body is not in the image of God. This body is in the image of beasts. That's why Eco. a man that's born that's not born again behaves like a beast. You need a new birth because this birth is made in the image of beasts. Your hand looks like the hand of a bear. Your face is the structure of a gorilla. Amen. You 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 are made in the image of animals. When we with me, no says Ranyan. This body is taken in the image of animals. Said with me, no says Ranyan. That's why without a new birth, because the Lord has this becomes a beast. Let no figure even this 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 Ranyan. You get a scorny outside. For man is selling a part that can grab your belongings. Selling a tattoo in Bashaya and stab you. Let us stab it and feel nothing. It's a beast. Get some body that can rape a woman and feel nothing. Amen. Get some body, brother, that gets angry and feel like beating you right now. That spirit of a beast. That's why. You need the new path and kill the beast in you completely. Hey, sometimes you can see that beast rising among the children. You see the way a man comes. Hey, that beast is now coming. We must kill that animal completely. In us. Amen. A man, brother, not born again. Sometimes it's worse than animals. Worse than animals. You don't find animals drinking beer. No dogs don't drink beer. They don't drink beer. That's for us human beings. Because without new birth, we become like animals. We get lower than animals. Amen. No other than animals. You find a man having a child here in Crescondi, child in Mitchell's Place, a child in Atlantis, a child in George. And this man does not even look, take care of this children. He's just breaking. Me, I've got a child in George. Got another one in Portenosa. What are they eating? What are they dressing? He does not even know. He has no words. Because that's what a dog does. A dog wakes up in this house. He makes a child. Goes and makes a child in the house. Goes and makes a child in the house. And the dog does not even take care of those children. Does not even take care of those children. Same thing that the man is doing. Because this body is made in the image of animals. He 
Because you don't get the Holy Ghost. That animal overpowers. That animal comes and overpowers. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah, oh, it's a female talk, mas. Yinja, eh, 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 Where you will find male talks fighting over. Of mana is yinja, as, 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 you find it in human beings. Because she's got a boyfriend there, the boyfriend there, boyfriend there boyfriend those boyfriends come and meet at times and fight. The is because the demand in the wedding is called Ulusan. That's a spirit of an animal. Moya was Luanyana. It's a spirit of an animal. Moya was Luanyana. Because this body was not made in the image of God. I was wrong as Milos Gati. This body is in the image of animals. This Milos is Luanyana. But, what was? There's no notice. Notice, man. God knew in the beginning that he was saying to have men and women. He knew that the Savior would be here. And you he would have to bring Jesus. He would be crucified. I'm in mean, paragraph 57. Questions and answers on Genesis paragraph 57. And he knew that the Savior would be here. And he would have to bring Jesus. And he would be crucified. And Jesus told the disciples when he was here on earth that he knew them before the foundation of the world before the world ever came into existence Jesus was with them that's why Job says where were you when the sons of God were shouting together for Job Job knew all the time he was with the brothers Job knew all the time he was greeting brothers and we were shouting for joy Job knew all the time before the foundation of the world Jesus says yes Jesus says yes John 15, verse 27, says you shall also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Jesus says you have been with me from the beginning. Says I knew you before the foundation of the world. Amen. There are people that were known before the foundation of the world. That was not in this flesh. That was in a theophile. Amen. He says on question and answers on Hebrews number three. Questions and answers on Hebrews number three. That's question 57, 10 or 6. Paragraph 808, 48. He says, now, there you are. That's the way we are here. We come from a higher being. We come from a higher being. In the beginning, we were in the image of God. Before we came on this flesh. The veil and the darkness keeps us from knowing it now. But Jesus told his disciples, he was with them before the foundation of the world. We you can't know it now. But he was in the beginning. And if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have run already waiting. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we move into this theophile. What? What we once lived. We moved in this theophile, which we once lived in. So we can eat and shake hands. Amen. Amen. So there was a time we once lived there. Praise in God. Now, when this one is dissolved, we we'll go back to that one. That's why when some when when Samuel died, to Samuel it was three, four years after his death. The witch of Endo could, you know, uh, uh, contact him because paradise was still under. Paradise was still under. 
It was just like the fifth dimension of That was just a chasm. That was separating paradise and 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 and, 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 and uh, yeah, the, 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 the regions of, of, of torment and hell. Which is, you know, where the, the, the where, where the unbelievers go when they die. Because look at this. There is seven dimensions. We live in the third dimension. This we live in these three dimensions. According to science, which is la light, okay, time, and, and matter. This is where we are. You get a fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is the dimension of communication the dimension of technology that's why you can be in Cape Town and I'm here and I can phone you and we talk we are connecting in the first dimension that's why you can be here and there's a football player in England and you watch it here real time they are playing in England but you switch your team you see it here it comes in the fourth dimension dimension of technology dimension of communication then there is a fifth dimension it's underwear that's the regions of hell that's the demonic regions that's where were the sinners when they die from good and then there's a sixth dimension, which is the region of the blessed, the region of angels. That's where the saints, when they die, they go to. And then there's a seventh dimension, which is the presence of God, where God dwells. Amen. Amen. Now, Paradise has now been converted into a sixth dimension. Because when Christ died and the, and, and, and the graves opened, he emptied out paradise and took them to the sixth dimension. Today, there is no link between hell and the, and, and the sixth dimension. Because paradise was taken into a higher dimension. When Moses was dead over 1,400 years, and here uh, 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 Elijah was going to heaven over 700 years before, here in Matthew 17, in Mount Transfiguration, we see them there. The disciples see them there. They don't see. A 700 year old man, Elijah. They don't see a 1,100 years old man in Moses. There's no growing old in that dimension. There's no growing old in those bodies. So they see Moses and Elijah in their perfect stature. And they see them not as spirit. Because Moses, because the disciples, they say, but let us build three tents here. One for you, Jesus. One for Moses. One for Elijah. And spirit don't live in a tent. So they were seeing bodies. They were seeing bodies. But those are not bodies that grow old. Those are theophany bodies. But it's a body you can shake. It's a body you see. Because they were looking at it. Amen. So which means there is a world right now where people are alive. Where people are living. It's a world. Oh, 
When you have that pot, you can feel the charge of it. No wonder when we speak about it, there's an excitement that comes to your heart. Because we've got a representation. I can preach this brother on the street there. It will mean nothing to those people. There will be no connection because there's no representation. But to those who have the representation, oh, they come out of it. They come out of it. Just like that evil story. Just like the evil story. The problem speaks about it. Says there was this evil brother that left his egg. You know his egg in a farm somewhere. And the farmer took that egg and combined it with the eggs of the chicken. And the chicken, you know, uh, set over those eggs. And the eggs were hatched. Chickens came out. And a funny looking creature, which was a little eagle, came out of the eggs. Amen. They grew up together. But that, the other one God was, was not a chicken. The other one was an eaglet. Just born in a chicken pan. Growing up in a chicken pan. But that was an eaglet. Oh my. No wonder the piper. Like it's the police. To eaglets. Which are run in the fields. These chickens, they eat everything. I can't eat everything. Amen. You remember when you win the world? When you win the nomination? You were there. Opa. But not satisfied. There was something that was telling you. Something is still missing. Something is still missing. These people are rejoicing. But I still want something more. Something more. Oh, my God. 
We stayed with that man and we were discussing the scriptures from 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It was the Tuesday afternoon. I think 2009. In June, beginning of June, I know the date because the Saturday was the 29th. Ominati was born. That was the Saturday. She was born on a Saturday. Why is it a woman? 29th of May. 29th of May. In 2010. Yes, yeah, so it was in 2010. 2010. Amen. So in, on, on the following day, I preached there in this brother's church. And he took the word and said, No man, I want a discussion with you over this. Then on a Tuesday, I don't know, it must was it a first. Does, does end in, in, in first on 30th on the 31st 30th 
So it was the first of June. Tuesday from about five o'clock we had an appointment. On Tuesday, the appointment we and we discussed the scriptures. Like the man of Like the men of Peria. Like the Perians. We are opening the scriptures. That's the children's ballo. Then when we were finishing, it was past twelve at night. The man says, "You are going nowhere. I'm going to be baptized now." Go. Past one in the morning. Past twelve of seven. Now it's the seventh of June in the oh, morning. For two, 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 two. So cold, brother. Banda. It's in winter. Who was up Says now. Nah. That was him. Here in the eagle screen. They did not push this for another time. They did not push this to other people. He says now I'm here in the court. I identify myself with my heart. We went looking for the water. And using our cars. As the torches. We buried him in that field. And the new man resurrected. And you man resurrected. And you know what? That was right according to the scriptures. Because the eunuch said, Tell me what tell me about these scriptures. I'm reading Isaiah 53. I'm not understanding. Must this thing happen? Is it still gonna happen? Philip, Philip opened up the scriptures to the man. And as they were going, the, the, the eunuch said, This thing is for me. What hinders me? He doesn't have a baptism. They saw a river. They put the eunuch in the river. Right there. Right there. No postponement. No postponement. Yes, sir. Amen. If this earthly tabernacle is dissolved, we have one already waiting. And then we move into this theophile that we once lived. We once lived in it. We once lived there. And then we came to be on this earth. Bypassing it. Because we did not stay there. We did not stay in it. We bypassed it. South Ziba. To come and be tested. Who's of In this earth. Gromshaba. Built a character. But we were once there. And now God. In his restoration. And bringing us back there. He comes. Uza. And tabernacles himself in us. Let me close by this. He comes. Uza. And tabernacles in us. When he fills you with the Holy Ghost. He comes. Uza. To tabernacle into your body. He is making you. To be influenced. By your theophan. To come into contact. With your theophan. Amen. Amen. You are getting influenced. Amen. By your heavenly body. In the message, the testimony of a true witness. There's a testimony of a witness. That's not a true witness. That he was there. That's not a true witness. A true witness. Says, I was there. I saw him. He was wearing this. And he said these words. A testimony of a true witness. Paragraph 187. But the Holy Ghost is dead. Oh my. The Holy Ghost is dead. God tabernacled in man. The Holy Ghost is dead. The Holy Ghost is not just a spirit. Just a spirit. That's like you get a spirit of a man. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost Amen. is dead. Amen. God tabernacled in man. Amen. It's more than a sensation. Amen. It's more than speaking in tongues. Amen. It's more than shouting. It's more than weeping. It's more than joining church. It's God living in man. That's the Holy Ghost. It's God living in man. He always desired 
to dwell among men. You always desire to be tabernacled among men. When he gives the Holy Ghost, it's more than a sensation. It's more than a feeling. It's God living in a man. Deity. God himself tabernacled into that person. Not in another person, but into that person. When he can speak, it's just the same as God speaking. That's the church of Jesus Christ. That's the way the apostolic church went for. There's many doctrines about the Holy Ghost. Even a doctrine that says the Holy Ghost is the spirit that comes to a pastor. When you get the spirit of the pastor, you are getting the Holy Ghost. You think I'm lying, is there? Because they say that's the, that's, that's the person of Christ. Person of Christ is a man in a pastor and you get that spirit brother that's a Roman Catholic spirit because that's what the Pope is the vicar of Christ making the Holy Ghost to in a particular man because the Pope now takes the place of Christ the Holy Ghost is God God himself not the spirit of a pastor God himself tabernacled into that person and that person when he can speak is just the same as God speaking that's the Holy Ghost Amen in the message oneness paragraph 14, paragraph 14. now the first man and first woman in the garden was, was in perfect harmony with God perfect harmony with God so much that God could come down at any time he desired and talk lip to ear with Adam now that is perfect what oneness God and his creation God speaking lip to ear with Adam and Eva they were so perfect in harmony with God till they were one with God and God and his family that's God tabernacling in man and God becoming their God any man and his family and correct, good, noble, obedient family is one with another any family if there's something in the family that moves them apart it's not right the family is broken somewhere they should all be one father with mother mother with father children with parents parents with children all in agreement when you see that you will see one lovely picture you know sometimes these examples are so powerful to come to let us understand God. Let me speak for example of my small family. I've got four girls. They are all different. All, different. all four of them. They are different. But there's a connection between me and each and every one of them. Individually. I've got a connection with each and every one of them. Amen. And now, because they are so different, they can clash. They clash. But we don't stop being a family. We don't stop being connected. There's a connection with me. But because they are different characters, those characters may see may have different ideas. They may see things differently. They may see things differently. It does not stop them being part of that family. And it does not stop them being brothers and sisters. Yeah, John, brothers and sisters. Because he knows that they are sisters and sisters. That's why now he's struggling to call me. 
It does not stop them. Being related. Being family. Being sisters. Just because they see it differently. Not just because they are clashing in a certain thing. It does not say. Now you are going to go and sleep in another house. They still come and sleep in the same room. They will clash you over something. But they still go and live and sleep in that same room. And not clutching one another. I hope you are what I'm saying. Our connection is with God. But we are different. We've got different characters. At some point we're going to see things different. It does not stop our brotherhood. At some point, brother, we're going to argue and debate and don't agree on one thing. It does not stop our brotherhood. It does not mean now this one must go and we still come to one church. We still come as a family without catching one another we are united by the father we are united by me and I'm giving them my house we are united by God he's giving us his church we can learn something right now it's not going to make us the same it won't make us the same amen, amen. 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 But we will still be in union in spite of us seeing this. There's things, brother, that won't shake you from your salvation. Was it, brother? Was it, brother? That was saying that in the youth. There's things that won't move you from your salvation. They won't move you from your salvation. You can see them different. They have got nothing to do with your eternity. There's things that got to do with your eternity. You must be baptized in the name of the Lord. You can see that different. You've got to see the same. That has to do with your eternity. That has to do with your eternity. But brother Musa loves that cut. I love this cut. Ah, it's not separate. Ah, it's not separate. Ah, it's not separate. It's not separate. It's just his preference. When I was his age, you were. I probably was doing it. But now I see things differently. In a matured way. I say you must wait until he comes to stage. You will know that you must get proper cuts. I'm not saying it's not proper. Amen. I just picked him for an example. Amen. I just speak him from a for an example. Amen. Amen. But here he's saying that family has to be united. And when they are united, he says, What a lovely picture. I'm he says that God's purpose and his purpose as Father Supreme was to be one with his family. Every family. Ethnic family, Adam and Eve. Adam, no, 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 Eva. Usa bloke zenye men. And the only way that they could be one with the family, injela enye kwa enza wamye, no sabo lo. And the court was because God's name, or in other invariable, was in them. So that made them with God's nature in them. The only way you will be one with God, that nature of God must be in you. God tabernacled in you. How can two work together unless they agree? You can't work with God and you don't agree with Him. Then you agree with Him and you agree with His word. He says, isn't that a beautiful picture? God in his family. Father over all. No death. No sorrow. No heartaches. No nothing. Just joy and speak of Never to be sick. Never do have a heartache. Just one with God. What a picture. Because the very nature of God was in this picture. And therefore, what they did, they followed just in line with God. And God with them made one. David says, Blessed is the man. 
whom God chooses to approach him that God may dwell with him that's Psalm 65 verse 4 that's Psalm 65 verse 4 in Psalm 91 he says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty God always wanted to dwell with him and the generation of Adam no, no, no. Adam always wanted to dwell with God. That's why the generation of Adam, Adam which is not the generation of Cain, when they hear the word, they want to do that work. They want to do that work. They want to submit to that work. May God bless you. I pray that you will yearn and desire and to be one with God. Remember, it's it was never God that left us. It was us that left God. We need to go back to God and be united with Him. Let's give Him the hands of praise. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. As we are praying this evening, this, this afternoon, as we are praying this afternoon, you may have that desire. You may have that desire. Remember, revelation brings a surrender. Revelation brings a submission. Revelation makes you want to take the word of God in its fullness. If you don't have that burning bush experience and you desire it when you really realize there's something lacking in my walk with God when you say the word that was preached has challenged my heart harden not your heart as I'm praying this evening this afternoon you can maybe raise your hand and say remember me in your prayer God bless you God bless your hand God bless your hand God bless your hand let us pray Almighty God eternally heavenly Father you are the same yesterday today and forever you never change I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ oh Father as your word has been preached that Lord God you will come Heavenly Father and be the after speaker in the hearts of your children that they may know Lord God that we need to get your realities we need to work with you I pray for the hands that are raised Heavenly Father the hearts that are surrendering to you that you will meet with them O Lord that you will Heavenly Father minister to their hearts and help them Lord God and work with you want you walk with them bless them father in the name of the lord jesus christ may they be found in you and you in them i pray mighty god that heavenly father you will come lord god and bless us you will come heavenly father and hide us behind the cross of calvary you will come almighty god and manifest your word in our lives heavenly father that you will come and be our guide and be our leader. There are people who are like that little eaglet. They are hearing the eagle scream and they are running to you, Lord. Bless them, O oh Father. Be with us and be with our weak that lies ahead. Heavenly Father, we take everything and we commit it in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Let's give God the hands of praise. Amen. His brother Sam will come forward. We're going to go to Stellenbosch. Amen to those that goes there. And may God richly bless you. I pray that you will be the after preacher. I pray that you will speak to your hearts. That your coming in his house won't be in vain. May God bless you. God bless your hearts. God bless your hearts. God is so As we rise to our feet.
This is the first Sunday since our youth came. Oh, this is the first Sunday here since our youth came back from the camp. And we believe they had a blessed time. Amen. We've heard the, 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 the testimonies. And uh, next week, when the youth leader is here, I want them as a youth to discuss with the youth leader and then they must come and give a report Amen of how the youth was a blessing to them we will give them time here before we get to the preaching of the word that they must come and give us a report I believe they were blessed I believe some of them will never be the same Amen. what blessing oh. love is so